Here we go! No, I'm okay. Hey everybody, welcome back. Sorry it's been so long. Before we get back to the route, I just wanted to touch on a couple things related to the route and upcoming goals for the account. If you're not interested, hover over the progress bar below to see where the route discussion begins. First off, since I haven't really mentioned it since I stopped doing introductions from episode 7 on, this account's route is actually based off of a written document that I've been working on for a while. The videos are a showcase of said route and help me figure out where I can make things more efficient for future users, so the route itself is constantly being updated. If you're interested in checking it out, the link is in the description below or in the card above. Related to that, when I do find a better or more efficient way to do something than when I did it myself, I try to mention it in the videos, but the written route will always have the most up-to-date information. Secondly, I created a Twitter so people could message me when they find any issues with or have any questions about the route, but it was suggested to me by one at a time on Twitter that I make a Discord server. He even offered to help set it up, and after looking into it a bit, I've made the server. It's currently called OSR Sufficient Irons, but that's subject to change. Check out the description below for the link. Feel free to poke your head in if you've got any questions, comments, suggestions, feedback, you name it. I'll be in the server to answer any questions, provide insight, and most importantly, to have an easier medium to provide updates about the route, the series, as well as any upcoming video series. But I also encourage anyone who's running the route or at all interested in efficiency on an Ironman account to stop by. It'll look a little bit of rudimentary at first, but once I establish roles and get sections filled out, it should look more polished. And finally, let's discuss some upcoming goals for the account to give a little context as to what we're working towards and why. Herbler is always somewhere looking to level up, and One Small Favor rewards two 10,000 experience lamps that we can use on it. One Small Favor requires completion of Shiloh Village, which is also a requirement for Legends Quest, which we need to do at least a part of to be able to continue Rescue for Disaster, so Shiloh Village is on the list. We recently freed Mad Eager from the Troll Stronghold Prison, and doing the Eager's Ruse quest will reward us with 11,000 herb lore experience. Completing Eager's Ruse will also allow us to do Myrm's Big Adventure, which will reward us with another 10,000 herb lore experience and 5,000 farming experience, and opens up a disease-free herb patch. The herb patch and farming experience are also fantastic because we need to get up to at least 42 in order to spicy stew boost to 47, to plant watermelons for the Mortania Easy Diary and Follador Medium Diary, but the higher we can get, the better, because that means it's easier to boost. Also, Troll Romance can be easily overlapped with Edgar's Ruse, so we'll be doing that as well for some nice agility and strength experience, and after all of that, we'll switch to doing some Mortania stuff, building up to Darkness of Hallowvale. Alright, on to the route. At the end of the last episode, we left off with finishing up the Eyes of Glufry quest before doing an inventory of ham store runes. After that, off camera, I did the easy clue scroll I got from the ham members, and I actually got a ham joint from it that's worth around 1.65 mil, because it's one of the only three weapons in the game that has a three tick attack speed. Now, it's time to prepare to overlap the troll and cramja quests I mentioned previously. To prepare, there's a few things I need that I should have paid attention to before, otherwise I'd still have them now. Edgar's Ruse requires an unfinished Ranar potion, and I already turned all of mine into prayer pots. One small favor requires a Harlander, Marantil, and two Guam Leaves. I already have the Marantil and Guam Leaves, of course, but I already turned all of my Harlanders into energy potions. So, I need to go to Edgeville Dungeon and kill some Chaos Troops until I get those two herbs, which is fine, since I have a chance to drop Law Runes, which I'm running low on. Next, you know that maple log I got last time for Eyes of Glufry? Yeah, I should have grabbed a second one for Troll Romance. And Edgar's Ruse also requires 5 raw chickens and 10 grain, so I'm going to pull out my coins and white apron, then minigame teleport to pest control and take the boat to Port Serum. We're going to go to the back of the food shop to get 5 raw chickens. I myself already have 4 in the bank, so I'm only grabbing one here. I'll also be fly fishing in the future, so I'm going to buy 500 more feathers, although I probably should have bought at least a thousand more. I also need runes, so I'm going north to the rune shop to purchase some. Specifically, we'll need some air runes for everything, and then water runes as we now have access to water blast. And, as we only need 10 grain, I decided to go grab some buckets of slime from the charter ship to fill the rest of my inventory, and then headed west to the field south of the Remington Mine to get the 10 wheat. Now we're going to home teleport to Lumbridge to bank and prepare for Troll Romance and Edgar's Ruse. During the Troll Romance quest, we'll be making a sled, so at the bank we're going to pull out the maple logs we just got, as well as a rope, 
an iron bar, a bucket of wax, cake tin, and swamp tar, the three of which can be combined to save inventory space if desired, as well as the vodka and pineapple chunks we acquired at the end of last episode. Oh, and of course, you'll want the climbing boots. Now we're going to take the fairing system to AJR and run northeast through a secret passage, which we actually unlocked by completing Troll Stronghold last episode. It'll take us to the bottom of the prison, where we can run up to the middle floor on the south side and talk to Ugg to start the Troll Romance quest. We're then going to go north to talk to Aga and Arg, back south to talk to Ugg, but before leaving the stronghold, we're going to go to the south side of the same floor and talk to Burnt Meat in the Troll Kitchen in order to continue Edgar's ruse. Then we're going to leave the stronghold to the east, go all the way up to Trollheim and into Mad Edgar's cave to continue the quest. After talking to him, we're going to minigame teleport or games necklace to Burthorpe, and then head west to talk to Tenzing, who will tell us where we can find these rare flowers for the Troll Romance quest. Then either run or games necklace back to Burthorpe, depending on how lazy you are, and go to the northeast to talk to Dunstan, who will make the sled for you with the items we've brought. Arty Cave teleport to the monastery, and then head north into the zoo, on the north side of which will be a parrot cage. Talk to the parrot handler there, and then combine your pineapple chunks with vodka, Use them on the parrot hatch and get yourself a drunk parrot. Now head back to the bank because we need to gear up to fight. As a side note, Edgar's Ruse will require three logs or two if you're careful. So before I pull out my combat gear, I'm going to grab an axe and chop three logs outside of Artie Bank. Then we're going to grab our best magic gear, some food, potions, and of course we'll want to keep the sled, drunk parrot, and climbing boots. Now take the fairing system back to AJR, go through the secret entrance, and head all the way back through it up to the top of Trollheim to talk to Edgar. After talking to Edgar, we're going to head back down Trollheim, and this time we're taking the path to the north, following it to the left, and eventually we'll go through a cave system and end up on the top of Trollweiss. There's an uncut sapphire spawn to the top here, which you can grab if you'd like, and then we're going to head to the south, sled down the hill until we get to the rare flowers, pick some, and then sled down the hill again, follow the cave system back to the secret entrance of the troll stronghold, and then while we're in the prison on the bottom floor, we're going to go to the north side of the cells and place the drunk parrot underneath the rack, and we'll come collect that later. Then, go back to the middle floor, and we're going to go talk to Arg so we can fight him. Oh, real quick, before talking to Arg, you do want to give Ugg the flowers. Alright, when talking to Arg, he will teleport you, so make sure that you're ready for the fight right beforehand, as he'll immediately get a hit off on you as well. If you brought your Excalibur, use a special attack there for the defense bonus. Otherwise, pray range and then talk to Arg. Once you get into the arena, run immediately north and have him follow you up until he gets on top of that upper platform then immediately run west and safe spot him in the same spot you safe spot dad. Note that he has to stay on the top platform there, otherwise he can walk closer to you and hit you. Then you just keep praying range and safe spot him normally. After killing Arg, we're going to head west through the gate and then take the path back to the secret entrance of the troll stronghold and follow it up back to talk to Ugg. Turn in the troll romance quest and we'll get one diamond, two rubies, four emeralds, as well as that sapphire we picked up on top of Trollweiss, 8,000 agility experience and 4,000 strength experience, bumping us up to level 40 agility, unlocking the Canifus course, which is perfect because eventually we're going to get to a point where we just need to grind out agility, and the Canifus course is going to be the best way to do that to get to level 60. Okay, from this point on, there's nothing to overlap with the remaining part of Edgar's ruse, so I'm just going to say follow the wiki quest guide, quick guide, or the route document and finish it up. The only thing I want to say is that when getting the Goutweed for the quest, you only need one, however Dream Mentor and Dragon Slayer 2 also require Goutweed. Those quests will occur way, way later on, so if you want, you can always come back later, but I decide to get all three now. Once you get the Goutweed, we're going to mini game teleport to Burthorpe and run all the way south to Taverly to talk to Sanfu. Give him the Goutweed and turn in the quest, gaining 11,000 Herblore experience as well as the Trollheim teleport which I believe we can start using at level 61 or so to teleport to Mad Eager's Cave. Now that we've got all that done, there's only one more requirement we need to meet prior to doing My Arm's Big Adventure, and that's getting 60% Taibo Wana cleanup favor, as that is deducted from us at the beginning of the quest. However, we need 100% favor for the Cramge and Medium Diary, and since that 60% gets deducted, we're just going to get the 100% now to save time later. Conveniently, it also opens up access to four other medium diary tasks, although due to drop chances, we're only going to get a couple of those done now. The minigame itself just involves macheting down jungle brush and repairing fences, however, certain enemies will appear that you can kill for extra favor rating as well as some notable drop. One of those are snakes, which I intend to get their snake skins in order to make some nice range gear. Another of those are brutu victims which all have 100 health and take very little damage unless you use a specific item against each of them. 
you use Relicence Bombs against the orangish ones, Anti-Poison against the green ones, and Cooked Food against the blue-white ones, but when doing it, I found that it made the most sense to just run from the blue-white one. Also, when getting 100%, I only saw three Brutal Victims overall, which is why you can see that in my inventory, I have way too many Anti-Poisons and way too many Relicence Bombs, just because I assumed the Brutal Victims would be much more of a common occurrence. The reason we want to kill a Brutu victim instead of running from all of them are because they drop a mask that can be crafted into a shield with two snakeskins, mind you, that gives a plus three mage attack bonus, making it our best in slot magic offhand right now, as well as five prayer, rendering it on par with our damage prayer book, but it also gives a minor amount of defensive bonuses, so that'll be nice. It also has an effect similar to a black mask in that when damaged by somebody, there's a 10% chance of draining the opponent's defense. Now, there's only 10 charges, and the, this can happen even when safe spotting, but once the charges are depleted, the stats are fine, so you don't need to ditch the shield. We're also bringing a spade, as anytime you chop down a jungle, there is a 1% chance to spawn a gout tuber, and we need to dig that up to trade with some gems and trading sticks to sap the dock for a tipped machete as a medium cram jadari task. We also get trading sticks from this activity, so later on when we get the woodcutting level to chop mahoganies, we'll come back and chop mahogany antiques for the diary task as well. There is a 5% chance for gem rocks to appear when hacking the jungle, however due to limited inventory space I decided to not bring a pickaxe and a chisel, although if you wanted to, you could chisel the gems and sell them to Gabuti for even more trading sticks. However, we'll be doing Shiloh Village at the same time, and I can always mine gem rocks right after that for the diary task. Okay, that was a lot of a surrounding discussion, so you're probably wondering where the hell the route is. First off, before we go get our favor, we're going to minigame teleport to Castle Wars and run south to outside of Jigig to talk to Uglugnar to purchase some Relicence Bombs. Notice that I'm getting multiple as we can bring them noted to Karamja, and there is a person called Isles at the Karamja General Store who acts just like Files does at the General Store in Remington, and you can trade them your noted items in exchange for 5 coins each, and they will unnote them for you. Along with that, I decided that I'm going to need some more anti-poisons, and I don't want to waste my super anti-poisons on those green brood victims. And since I have a lot of marintals, I decided to go kill an inventory of unicorns to get their horns. The best spawn happens to be southwest of the Woodcutting Guild and northeast of Land's End, because there's multiple unicorns by the magic trees there. Alternatively, you could just purchase the anti-poisons from the shop on Karamja, but they're a stunning 432 coins each, and that's fucking extortion. Then, since realizing that all we're going to be doing combat-wise is ranging, and I have some extra cash right now, I decide to go to the Champions Guild to purchase some Dragonhide Legs, Van Braces, and a Coif. Although, immediately after buying the Van Braces, I realized that they only give plus one bonus more than our Adam and Gloves, and they're not worth the 2.5k coins, so that's a bit of a loss there for me. Don't make the same mistake. Now we're going to go to Lumbridge, turn all our unicorn horns into anti-poisons, and then gear up to go get some favor. Alright, let's discuss a couple of inventory changes, because as I mentioned earlier, I brought too much stuff. For starters, you don't need the Excalibur for its special attack, as we'll be safe spotting pretty much everything, and the same goes with the food. I ended up bringing 7 lobsters, but that ended up being too much, as we're safe spotting everything, and we're not going to take that much damage at all. The same goes for the insect repellent, because while it can be used on mosquitoes and swarms that appear during the minigame, they're weak already, and we're already safe spotting them, so it's just wasting an inventory space. I would suggest bringing one or two less anti-poisons and relicence bombs. And when it comes to super anti-poisons, I did not need the two, just the one. And before we get the favor, we're actually going to fish up some more Karabonji, so you want to bring a small net as well, and of course that spade, in case that gout tube responds. Alright, we're finally moving on. Take the fairing system to CKR and go north to fish up some Karabonji. Even though I almost have 400 still, it's always nice to have a little more, and eventually remember that once we get 65 fishing, we can use Karabwanji as bait to fish up Karambwan, so we can never have too much. I'm going to sit here for about 10 to 15 minutes or so until I get around 1500, but if you want less, that works for you. When I was getting my favor, I realized that I could actually loop Shiloh Village into this section, so even though I did things out of order, I'm going to explain them to you in order so you know the most efficient way to do things. After fishing up our Karabanji, we're going to head south and then all the way east to the entrance of Shiloh Village to talk to Mosul Rai to start the quest. Then we're going to head back west, north the way we came, all the way into Taibo Wanai, where we're going to go to Trufidus and use the Wampum Belt on him, and then go through the conversation. After that, we're going to talk to Mercalli to the east in order to be able to start getting Taibo Wanai favor, and then we're going to go northwest to the general store in order to purchase a machete for I think 40 or 60 coins. 
Then we're going to head to either the northeast or southeast portion of the map outside of the Taibo one eye fence and start hacking some jungle to get that favor. <sighs> and about an hour and a half later, we finally got it. 100% Taibo one eye favor. Medium diary task fulfilled. We got our spider on a stick, our nine snake skins so I can make the bandana as well as the snake skin shield and the brudu shield. And if you'll notice on the right side of my inventory, I got the special snake spine for Rag and Bone Man 2, which has a 25% chance of dropping from snakes, so you might get that as well. Before leaving, we're going to head southwest to the blackened area that I mentioned way back when and cook our spider on a stick there to satisfy another diary task. If desired, you could do this part way through after getting the stick so that you always have that inventory space available instead of having to wait until the very end. Alright, we're finally done in the area for now, so we need a home teleport to Lumbridge to prepare for My Arms Big Adventure and part of Shiloh Village. Alright, in preparing for My Arms Big Adventure, there are two items that we need, but fortunately, we already have them. The first are the three buckets of Agthonki Dung that we got from Paul Nunich when doing the feud quest way back when, and the second is eight buckets of Super Compost. Remember that compost potion we got from Garden of Tranquility? Well, Way back when, when we had done the Garden of Tranquility quest, I had thrown all the weeds into the compost bin, so now I'm going back to the farm northwest of Draenor to get those 15 buckets of super compost. We're going to throw them all into the tool leprechaun because we can pull them out later during the quest, and at the same time you want to make sure that you have one of every tool stored in the tool leprechaun because we'll need those later as well. Either that, or you'll just have to bring it from the bank instead. Alright, back at the bank, let's prepare for the quest, and here is another one of the situations where I realized later on that I could have integrated more stuff with it, so I'll go through the most efficient route for you all. First off, you want to make sure that you have all of these items with you, feel free to pause if you need to take a look. Then we're going to take the fairing system to AJR and run northeast to the Troll Stronghold back entrance, up into the Troll Kitchen to talk to Burnt Meat to start My Arm's Big Adventure, then east to talk to my arm, and we're going to continue the quest up until the cutscene with Captain Barnaby that leaves us on Brimhaven, where my arm runs off into the jungle. But before meeting up with him, we're actually going to take the dueling ring to the duel arena and run to the gnome glider. Take it to the Gandius location, which is on Kramja, and run northwest to the fissure by the river. Go inside and follow the Shiloh Village quest guide until you get all four items. Make sure that you read them all. Then take the fairing system to CKR and run north to Taibowanai. Use all the items on Trufidus, head west, bury the corpse of the Bone Shard, then go back and talk to Trufidus, and he'll tell you where the tomb is. Make sure that you keep all of the items we got as we can trade them in for cash after Shadow Village is completed. Then we'll go north and talk to my arm to continue my arm's big adventure before going south to talk to Mercaly, which will initiate another cutscene at the end of which you'll get the hardy gout tubers. You'll end up on the Ardoin docks and we're going to run northwest of the bank to pull or keep out these items here. From here, we're going to fairing system back to CKR and go southwest to Cairn Isle, on the north side of which is a dungeon where we'll continue Shiloh Village. Then we're going to home teleport to Lumbridge to pull out these items here, along with some combat magic gear. Not an amulet of magic though, as we have to wear the beads of the dead for the next part of the quest. And now we're going to take the fairing system to DKP and run southeast until you see the bright green palm trees, and then continue the quest. Inside, you'll have to kill the three forms of Nasus Drazul, make sure that you safe spot it over the dolmen, get the corpse, and take the fairing system back to CKR, going back to the Cairn Isle dungeon, place the corpse on the dolmen in there, and finish up Shiloh Village, gaining 3.875k crafting experience, as well as access to the village itself. Then head out of Cairn Isle all the way to the east to go into Shiloh Village Bank. At the bank, we'll want to pull out all the items we had from Shiloh Village, including the black prism that we kept from Zogar Flesh Eaters. Head west and then north across the bridge to the building where Yanni Silika is and use all the items on him to get a nice 7k coin. After that, talk to him again to start the one small favor quest and then head back to the bank to pull out these items here. But before leaving the area, we're actually going to head east out of the town and then south to talk to the jungle forester to get their blunt axe to continue one small favor later on. Alright, now we can finally finish My Arm's Big Adventure. Take the fairing system back to AJR and head back through the Troll Stronghold the same way we've done a dozen times by now, and then continue the quest up until the point that the baby rock appears. Run behind the soil patch nearby that will eventually become the disease-free herb patch and you can safe spot the baby bird. Once it dies, the mother will appear and you'll want to pray ranged and hide behind the same safe spot so that it cannot damage you. However, it has an unavoidable attack that will stun you, so when it does stun you, since you can't attack it anyway, you'll want to make sure that you eat then to make the fight go as quick as possible. After that, finish up the quest and finally turn it in. Gaining 10,000 herb lore experience, 5,000 farming experience, and that disease-free herb patch I mentioned before. 
And I think we're gonna call it there. Thanks for hanging on, everybody. I know it's been about a month since I uploaded the last Efficient Iron Man episode. Sorry about that, but I hope that the double-length video made up for it. Please feel free to let me know what you think, and I will see you next time. Thanks again, everybody. Have a good one.